What's up guys, it's Bemidus Minecraft here with another lesson in dictatorship. Today we will be talking about Hideki Tojo, the Japanese Prime Minister throughout World War II. He was born on July 30th, 1884, to a military officer father who is a direct descendant to the Nanbu clan samurai and to a daughter of a Buddhist priest. With this as his heritage, he's actually quite respected despite his poorness. His Father's career starts off with the very first artifact. His first artifact is the Imperial Japanese Army Academy. As the name suggests, it is a Japanese Army Academy. Who would have thought? Not me. Um, he attended the school from childhood to adulthood. And the school was designed to create officers for the military, so it's not surprising that he eventually came one became one, and this is what actually um, helps him become the Prime Minister because he works his way up through the military and creates influence by recruiting many officers into his party. This is used to symbolize the beginning of his military reign. A lot of his decisions in life are based in the military and he is able to gain, like I said before, gain power through his military influence. Uh, spoiler alert, um, he actually does a very great job in the military and impresses the emperor and say so he gains his favor. The Imperial Japanese Army Academy was influenced a lot by famous samurai, which leads us to our second artifact. Artifact is the Bushido or the Samurai Code. And there's actually seven symbols and this one is the G which is integrity. And then the next one is Re or Respect. And these artifacts are the way of the samurai and what they live by. Toji himself is brought up by this code uh, from a young age since his father was trained in the samurai way as with his family. And in this time of Tojo's life, a lot of Japanese people wanted to get away from Western culture and embrace old Japanese culture, which a lot of it was going back into their ancient times of the samurai and looking into those ideals, which Tojo uses, uses to his advantage. And this is when he really pushes the code of the samurai. And this is where a lot of it is to do with like honor and respect. And a lot of honor was uh, for samurai was to not get captured by the enemy so a lot of people committed suicide and this is what ultimately leads to a lot of Japanese deaths in the World War II because a lot of them see death as a better option than being captured um, by the allies because it's just an honorable thing to do for them they swore allegiance to the Emperor how dare they give their life to someone else uh, it this is what created that dangerous mindset. The seven Bushido symbols are to show how Tojo was able to use old culture to influence the masses of people, and it's also to represent the deaths that have been caused by a lot. Alright, back to something better. Artifact 3 is more on the lighter side. It is a razor. I, it doesn't look like a razor. I don't know what an old school razor looks like from Japan so just assume that the razor part it can go into the wood part just assume that you know you know like the old time razors yeah you know you know the ones I'm talking about anyways the reason there's a razor is because it was Tojo's nickname it was created when he started in the military this is because of his bluntness and attention to detail and lack of humor but I mean like who would have thought this dude didn't have a sense of humor like what gave it away I thought I thought he was a comedian to be honest you know I thought a full-fledged comedian but apparently not <laughs> yeah he had zero humor he was actually very blunt to others no matter who they are where they whether they were a high-ranking officer or not and he got to down to business very quickly a lot of his things were that he just wanted to get obviously it over with which 
is actually pretty good because you can get the element of surprise if you go fast enough. But anyways, he was also a very violent person. Those who gifted him the nickname saw how violent his plans were, which we'll get into that later, so don't forget that, and rolled with it. His attention to detail falls into place with all his journals and plots. An example of this, though it isn't military related, it does foreshadow his other journals, which is where every time his kids or his wife got sick, he would keep journals of their symptoms and how many times they went to the bathroom, what they ate, and it just showed how attentive he was. And this can also be found in many of the plans he has for war. The razor artifact is to symbolize what others saw in him. Artifact 4, which actually deals with a um, thought that I had for Article 3, which is the violent acts aspect. And this is the rape of Nan King. This was an attack by the Japanese people to China. Toji was not yet prime minister. There's a lot of dead bodies, and I'll get to that. He was not yet prime minister, but he was still in a very important military figure, and he was able to lead this, and he actually went into the salt himself, and this was his first and only on-duty uh, war that he ever participated in. You know, didn't do anything else, but he did do that one. So, everyone give him a round of applause. Yeah, fun times. Okay, yeah, but seriously, uh, they actually killed 200,000 people, estimated. They uh, burned down houses. They actually created the policy burn to ash and the three all policies, which is basically burn all, kill all, and loot all. So this is what they did to the Chinese people. They It is actually considered one of the worst assaults, wars, battles to ever happen just because of the massacre that happened. The burning houses and dead bodies and blood is to represent the horror that Tojo has caused. Artifact 5 also deals with wars, but this is more in a specific way. It is a samurai helmet, and the samurai helmet is to actually represent the military power that Tojo creates. Before Tojo's power in the military, Japan only had a small army, which compared to the population versus a uh, military power they had, it was more like a small militia. But when he steps into power, he gain he recruits a lot of people, and this is because during his school days, he went to a lot of European countries like Germany. Uh oh, we all know what happened in Germany, so be careful of that one. And he gets a fascination with giant armies, and he wants to create a giant giant army in Japan itself. I chose a samurai helmet to show this because they wanted to revert back to their strong and powerful ways which a lot of it dealt with the samurai time all right who's ready for artifact six we're gonna go to disneyland who's ready to go to disneyland see this is disneyland isn't everyone excited actually before we go into here i was thinking i was thinking right we do a little little, you know, imagine, POV. Alright, you ready for this? Okay, so you're gonna imagine you're a American prisoner of war, and you have taken, been taken hostage by the Japanese people. Hey sir, you said we were gonna go to Disneyland. Now we're in your basement. So we're not going to Disney. Yeah, so this is Artifact 6, which is a basement. It is actually a containment for frozen, frozen and tortured prisoners of war. And the Japanese did this not because of, oh, this is to represent the treatment of enemies in war and what Japan thought of America. No, this is actually a biological warfare 
Fair and Other Scientific Advancement Unit, which was Unit 731. Tojo was in charge of this and used this for many reasons. They used it to create different chemical chemical gases and give them to the prisoners of war to see how it affected them. And this is where they wrote it down in journals and see saw if they could use it in battle. They also tore a lot of people's limbs off and they froze them off. Fun fact, most of the world's information on frostbite comes from this unit. So, thanks for that, I guess. The used gases and weapons in this unit was actually used a lot against China because of how badly Japan wanted to colonize them and grow their power. Alright, though that was kind of depressing, we didn't go to Disneyland, we have U uh, Artifact 7. And Artifact 7 is a poorly made replica of the HE380A2 uh, Bell Type 99 single engine dr uh, dive bomber, 79 of the Mitsubishi A6M2 Ziki or Zero Model 11 Carrier Born Fighter fighter and the and 143 Nakajimi B5 N2 K type 97 model 12 single engine torpedo bombers that were used during the bombing of Pearl Harbor this represents it represents the um, Japan's attack against the US which ultimately leads to their demise um, Tojo himself approved of this bombing and sent them off. This is during his time as Prime Minister, and this is because he thought he was be able to win just because he would be able to catch America off the offset and cause a lot of damage to their um, navy, which the, this, the navy was important because they were looking to fight America in the Pacific, which is essentially just a bunch of small islands because they wanted to colonize all those islands instead of fighting, fighting them in mainland. So it would benefit them a lot. The plane is kind of like a symbol of death. It's to symbolize how it brought death to the US, but ultimately it was the sol it was the factor that caused Tojo to lose his reign. And finally, because of the loss of the rain, we have Artifact 8, which is a poorly made katana, but it's fine because it looks like a katana. And as you can tell, there's multiple samurai symbols here. A lot of it has to do with honor and respect, and that's because of Japan's re revival of its history. We already covered how people use the samurai code to pledge their undying loyalty to the emperor. However, some people did not follow that, and Hideki Tojo was one of those. Once the US won over Japan, many Japanese leaders committed suicide as was the honorable thing. However, Tojo did not. He planned to do it the day that the American soldiers were coming for him so they could take him to trial, but his thought process was they can't take me if I'm not alive, so instead he shot himself in the stomach three times. He did not end up dying because of American soldiers were already on his way to his house and was able to they were able to save him before he committed suicide, and in turn he was faced into a trial. There is a theory that he had a doctor come and draw an X over his heart to make sure he knew where he was shooting. But again, he only went to one war, so he wouldn't know how to shoot a gun. And due to this failure, a lot of the Japanese public hated him for it. Because how are you going to make us swear our undying lo loyalty to you and the Emperor if you're not going to give it to the Emperor himself? For what did you do this for? And so it gained him a lot of hate, and it actually disrespected his honor and his family, and a lot of people see it as his downfall.